Berge, the capital of Pamphylia Secunda, an ancient commercial city with unique urban planning, water infrastructure, and sculptures. The city of Planchia Magna and the mathematician Apollonus, who introduced the terms ellipse, hyperbola, and parabola. Built in honor of Emperor Hadrian, this late period gate is a part of the Roman wall. The 24 meter long, richly decorated gate points us in the direction of the magnificence to come. Are you ready to pass through the gate like an emperor and discover the wonders of the city just like in ancient times? After passing through the gate and entering the city, people would cleanse their body, clothes, and soul in the southern bath. There were separate bathing areas with different temperatures, including the frigidarium, the cold bath, the tepidarium, the warm bath, the caldarium, the hot bath, and the sudatorium, the sweat bath. Like an art gallery, the bath was full of mosaics and sculptures. One set of these, which is now on display in the Antalya Museum, depicted gods and goddesses and was donated by the local philanthropist Claudios Payson. The symbol of Parge today, the Hellenistic gate and walls are the only pre-Roman structures still standing. The gate consists of two round towers and a horseshoe-shaped courtyard, resembling the characteristic of the town. Containing statues of gods and the legendary founders of the city, the courtyard served as a type of propaganda. Ancient cities had a special building where meat, fish, and luxury foods were sold. This building is called a Mycelum, and now we're in the Mycelum of Parge, evidenced by this butcher or fishmonger sign, featuring a knife, a hook, and a fish. The 400-meter-long limestone colonnaded main street leads to Hadrian's Nymphium and the Acropolis. What makes this 20-meter-wide street unusual is the 2-meter-wide water channel running down the middle. The water from this channel flows from the next stop on our tour of Parge, the Nymphium. Imagine water flowing over this beautiful goddess, flowing along the main street and out to the different districts of the city. Incredible! Now I'm going to explore the ruins outside the city walls and meet with the Assistant Director of Excavations, Aitach Donmez. The city walls lost much of their importance during the Roman peace, the Pax Romana, which lasted more than 200 years. The city spread outside the walls, including large buildings like the theater and stadium. Well, I can see you and your team are working really hard on the stadium. So what exactly have you excavated here? Yeah, actually we do two things here, restoration and excavation. Hmm. Uh, Restoration part, nearly uh, about four years already we started around the cover of the stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, excavation, uh, as you see here, we excavated this part of the stadium. Late part of the stadium, mm -hmm. I mean uh, in the late Roman period, this wall transformed the arena. 
Ah. And the, in the excavations, about last two years, we have found also good proof about it. There is a small gate and also mm -hmm. in this side, mm -hmm. there is one more. Mm -hmm. They are uh, for the wild animals fights. The animals coming to the ah, arena and fighting doors. each other. Uh -huh. Yeah, they are exciting findings for us. So, what's your dream project for Parge? Dream project, of course, we have a dream project. Uh, there is a fountain in the north part of the city mm -hmm. called it's Kestros. Uh -huh, yeah, I saw it. Maybe next years or other years, we want to do it and uh, flow this fountain again to the city, to the, really? to the pool of the city, the streets. That's amazing. That would be incredible to see yeah. the water flowing through the fountain again. Yeah, we want it. Well, good luck to you. And thank you so much for taking time to talk to thank me. Thank you. Thank next you. Year again to see you. Yes, I hope so. See you and the fountain. <laughs> Thanks. The theater, with a capacity of 15,000 people, was one of the most important centers of arts and culture of the city. This theater stage building has five doors and a series of reliefs portraying the life of the god Dionysus. Many sculptures were discovered in excavations of this theater by Jale Innan and Haluk Abbasolo, both important figures in Turkish archaeology and former excavation directors of Pärge. Now I'm headed to the Antalya Museum to see these sculptures in person. Parge made it onto the UNESCO Tentative World Heritage List in 2009. Thanks to the many sculptures recovered from Parge and surrounding ancient cities, the Antalya Museum has one of the richest collections of Roman period sculpture in Turkey. I'm in the Hall of Emperors and Empresses in the impressive Antalya Museum standing in front of a statue of Plankia Magna. Plankia Magna was the first female mayor and generous benefactor of Parge. Many artifacts from Parge were sent to museums around the world. But in recent years, some of these have been returned to Turkey. So, to get more information about them, I'm meeting with the museum director, Mustafa Demirel. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through Pärge and the Antalya Museum. And stay tuned to Turkish Museums. Up next, we'll explore some of the ancient flavors of Pärge.